Hello, a very warm welcome to Sports Scene and a very happy new year to everybody out there from everybody on the program. What better way to start 1988 than at a Celtic Rangers game in the pouring rain, no less. Well, you know, let's not kid ourselves. There's more than two championship points at stake today. There's a reputation of this very old fixture because of what happened last time. Well, both managements have been at great pains to show there is harmony between the two clubs and the players demonstrated this before kickoff. A great welcome for the two sides coming out together and for the first time that I can recollect coming to the centre circle to greet their respective supporters. And there is this unprecedented gesture, Celtic and Rangers players together. And one hopes, although perhaps in vain, that this is caught up, the spirit is caught up on the terracings. Let's have a look firstly at the Celtic team. And there, very interestingly, at number five is Lex Bailey, the son of an ex-Rangers player, who's now one of uh, Scotland's prominent football writers. And the Rangers side, I think uh, most Rangers supporters excited by the appearance of Mark Walters. Rangers creating a bit of history by having the first coloured player in the history of the club. And there's a referee for today, Alan Ferguson. It's his last season as a referee, and he's known affectionately amongst the circle of referees as Bo Jangles. The conditions are absolutely appalling here at Celtic Park. Lashing rain, strong wind, which I think at the moment is slightly favouring Celtic. And a bit of a whirlwind start, not surprisingly. And Mark Walters getting his first touch of the ball, even though it was only a very brief one. And I think both sides now, Celtic traditionally. Um, have a history of very good starts against Rangers here at Celtic Park. Ball swirling there and a very good header by Billy indeed. Ball next day, the conditions are very heavy and that was offside. It must have been very marginal, though, and that is something that uh, might catch up on Rangers. Now Walters. The tackling there by Scott. Here's Durant. Miller's after this with Richard Goff. defence and swept away. Oh, that's just pass and a corner kick. Good effort by Celtic. Paul McStay is always very dangerous from that position just outside the penalty area. Nice flick across goal there and he was up on it very promptly. And there was a deflection. Ali McCoy's of all people back in defence. Joe Miller again. Stark. That's another corner kick. It was Derek White who had come forward. Celtic really hoisting a lot of balls like this into Rangers defence testing them out very early in this match. Rangers goalkeeper struggling for that, and I think it may be... No, it's not a free kick. Sunez, slack one by Sunez. Paul next day trying to go in. 
and there's Woods. And that was a mistake by the Rangers manager that may have cost Rangers dearly. Paul McStay trying to slip it back to everybody, but Woods had read it well. John Miller. That's a throw, Walter's getting his foot in, and, Walt and Miller, John Miller there, has been popping up on both the right and the left. I think he's obviously been given a free reign. Just to go at this uh, Rangers defence anyway he likes. Pushing and jostling going on. And I think Celtic will get the free kick out of that. Celtic in a very good position indeed here. Ooh, that just over from Stark. And the Rangers defence were really fun wanting there. It's Morris who takes this, and watch Stark feeding everybody in the air. That could have gone in the back of the net. Here's Sunnis. It's a bad ball by Sunnis again. Now McAvenny. Here's Miller with a chance and a great save by Woods. And once again, that came off a mistake of the manager. Very good goalkeeping this, making the angle very difficult for Joe Miller. He made the right kind of advance from goal. And another corner. A lot of running around in that penalty area. And David Cooper winning it with his head, would you believe? It's almost unprecedented. Aiken. Here's Stark. Miller. Oh, that was straight off. White took him in. No, Rogan. It was Rogan who got in there. And Nisbet seemed to stand and watch him doing it. This Nisbet. Shocking ball there by Roberts. That's good play, feels for the penalty, but Woods is down, and the referee is waving play on. And Rangers are intent on suicide, it seems to me, where they're playing some of these balls across the fence. And I think we're going to have a substitution. Cooper, as he did last week, is coming off very early in the game. We've only played 26 minutes, and off he comes. He only did something like nine minutes last week. He has, obviously, he's been a calculated gamble, which hasn't come off. And on comes Trevor Francis. And uh, Rangers now have five Englishmen on the field, and that must be something of a record for an old club match. On the line it goes. Almost picked up by Francis. Nisbet. Here's Durant again. Ooh, good run by Durant. That's the third of the kick. I would have thought. Oh. Referee turns away from that. Nice play by Durant, he was looking very dangerous, thought he might lose it here. Now, this was a crucial tackle. No, in the slow motion, he did a bit of a dive. Walters. Yes, he gets a free kick. Rangers beginning to 
put the game together. Nisbet will try the shot, and he was always going to slide off that. It was a very difficult uh, ball to take. Coming across the body to his right side. Oh, free kick. And he really can't get going, well, does the attention has been rather fierce on him. It's McCoyst. Well, that might not have been far away. He's very good at turning in the penalty area like that, Ali McCoyst. Might be a little bit difficult to see from this angle. That's of a go at it anyway. Good turn, and uh, oh, I think McKnight was just making sure more than anything else. possession Eric White Francis back defending and does well this was not here's White coming forward and a good recovery by the young Rangers fullback and the Rangers captain Roberts helping out by Sunas, it was always going to be late though. Stark takes over, good run by Stark. Great run. Oh, Walker, side-footing it, lacked a conviction. And Stark has always been menacing. Judged the run to perfection. You can see that was was going to go over. Good move by Durant again. Here's Walters. Nice move to the outside. Wilkins with him. Sunnis. Walters, that's an awkward ball he got in. Well taken by McKnight. Difficult one for a goalkeeper on a day like this. to have time. Trevor Francis. Here's Nisbet. Again the run by Durant. This time he won't get it. Aiken has been quite superb for Celtic. McStay. That's a better ball. Oh, it's off the line. That was Joe Miller almost putting it in. Excellent move by Celtic. Once again, the overlap is very effective. And that chance there, just off the line. Good defending by Rangers. Stark. Here's Walker getting a bit of freedom. Stay. Durant 
tries to get that. Here's Monroe. Uh, Rangers looking groggy again. Villa. to get that goal but it was deserved those might have scored it Frank McAvenny Celtic really ought to have gone ahead in that first 20 minutes when they had Rangers on the rack but the goal when it came was superbly structured by Paul McStay I mean you can't get better passing than that and every element linked up the overlap and the finish by the striker at Celtic leading and the way they've been playing, I think it's going to be very difficult for Rangers to get back into this game. Well, the game was slightly held up while uh, some assortment of fruit was removed from the pitch. You can see it there, just in front of the jungle. And off we go into the second half. As I said, Rangers are going to find it very difficult to get back into this game if we go on the pattern of the first 45 minutes as McStay playing so well so confidently oh, just given away by Nisbet Getting a lot of distance. Bailey making his debut and playing like a veteran. Nice start. Tennis. Just taken there by Bailey. And Durant caught in possession again, and that's happened uh, too often for Rangers' own good. We're all getting, almost getting into a tangle. Well, too much of that, Durant won't get it. was uh, Walters going in here trying to take on the Celtic defence by cutting inside and he almost did awkward ball for the Celtic goalkeeper did well to drop down on it uh, Roberts Wilkins bad ball by Wilkins that time turning the tables and this has been a dangerous man Morris coming forward very well indeed Comes Wilkins. Now, Durant. Been caught far too often like that. Oh, that's a miss by Walker. He was left all in his own. Now, this ball was put through by Morris, and certainly that lovely little touch on for Walker gave him an excellent opportunity. Not to finish better than that. And I think it's free kick, yes. 
Double kick to Celtic. Wow, wow. First sign of misunderstanding between a goalkeeper and uh, Graham Roberts. We've got the big men up there again, Celtic. And that was well put, taken down by Woods. And it's a free kick. And Wilkins pulling uh, Roberts away, who was enraged by that challenge. Right, this is what all the furore was about. Up went Woods. He took it there. And down he went. Oh, it was a fair enough challenge. I think the Rangers doctor has been called for. It's a difficult decision to make to play a, a recognized goalkeeper of class who's only um, half fit, but I'll bring somebody in. He's not a goalkeeper at all. Now it looks as if Woods is carrying on. He's recovered, but I'm not sure how completely. One forward there by Durant. And there is a tackle by Roberts, which the referee is going to have a word about. Uh, this was a challenge. He went right through the ball. No question at all about that. Morris. Walters did that very well. He opened it out nicely. Now Francis. Lisbon on the far side. Yeah, so get a free kick for that. That was obstruction. Not a bad ball, it's in. No. Challenge on the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper had it. I think we'll see this clearly enough. Up went McKnight. And there was Richard Goff forcing it out of his hands. The referee judged that as a free kick. to me as if Woods is going to have to go off. No, it's Roberts is going in goal. Roberts who was in goal coincidentally enough in the last game. And a sad sight for the Rangers supporters. Of any. That is a free kick to Celtic. And they really ought to have a tremendous advantage. No woods in goal, and that's a goal. About six minutes remaining. Beautifully headed in. And a sad sight. Graham Roberts had no chance for that. There was McAvenny. Doing very well indeed to get in there. And Roberts doesn't have the skill to stop that. didn't go after that, he does now.
And there goes the final whistle. Celtic, at the end of the day, comfortable winners by two goals to nothing. And a delighted support who have been singing happy birthday, Celtic, since, whoa, the time when they realised the game was well over in this Celtic centenary year. There's the man who has given them a marvellous start, Frank McAvenny. Celtic handling 1988 to the great delight of their support. I thought one of the marked differences between the two teams was the sheer enthusiasm of the way Celtic uh, went to the task. I thought in the first 20 minutes it looked as if they might sweep Rangers away. A very shaky looking Rangers defence, particularly for cross balls, except that their goalkeeper Chris Woods in that first 20 minutes brought off some excellent saves. And there again, there was a difference between the two teams because I thought Celtic, with a very young defence, particularly Lex Bailey making his old firm debut, played outstandingly well. Lex, uh, you might say, is a chip off the old block, except I think he's even bigger than his father, and that's really saying something. Because Rangers carried no real menace or threat there, and obviously that is a problem they have to solve very quickly. Well, uh, I hear, by the way, that Chris Wood's injury is a broken rib, and he may well be out of action for something like six weeks, so... Troubles come in legions, as they say. Well, it is Celtic centenary year, so we thought it would be very appropriate uh, on this, the 2nd of January, 1988, to invite the team captain, Roy Aiken, over after the game, and he talked to us. Roy, firstly, a very happy new year. Yes, yeah, same yourself, Archie. It certainly was a happy year for us today. Good start to the centenary year too, isn't it? That's right. There's a buzz about the place. I mean, we all know how much it means to the club. It's 100 years mm -hmm. behind us, and mm -hmm. it would be nice to go on and, and win the, the championship in the centenary year. You know, these games are built up. The tension is enormous in them. And, you know, we in the media, we kind of hype them as well. Um, it must get through to the players occasionally like this. Oh, well, it definitely does. They're great games. They're the games you look forward to. Yeah, but the reason I ask you that is the game itself for you, for Celtic, was much easier than you might have imagined because I didn't think Rangers contained any threat to you. I thought our tactics were great. We spent a lot of time uh, talking about the game and talking about the threat that Rangers have in Durant and McCoist. And uh, I thought Lex Bailey and Derek White were outstanding today. Well, I thought Lex Bailey in particular played very That's well. That's right, and they made my job very easy. Well, you could return now. Um, well, hopefully I've got a few years left in me yet. McAvenny's goals were well taken, weren't they? They're great goals. I mean, it's great for him because, uh, as I say, he's done really well since he came from West Ham. He's scored, I don't know how many goals now. But the game, the game, the game's against the Rangers. When you score against the Rangers, that's that's when you make your name. And yeah, there's sure. two two great goals today. Well, keep coming from Paul McStay, of course, that was a superb pass he had for that first goal. Oh, a great pass! I mean, into to Chris Morris and Chris just played right across the goals. Yeah. And the second goal, I don't, even if Chris was had been on, I doubt it very much if he saved the header. Yes, well, it was a clean header. I mean, he got to it the right kind of way. Didn't that's he? right. He's good at that though. He's good at timing the ball. Um, he seems to meet it at the highest point, which is very good. I mean, he's, he's good in there. You've seen that against Richard Goff umpteen times today as well. So you think um, the championship is heading your way? Well, we're confident. I mean, we're playing well. There's a long, long way to go. There's a lot of games to play yet. But uh, it's, that's our ambition. We want to win that Premier League title. Roy Aiken, delighted with...